This video is going to explore sets and set notation. Okay, so here we have set A and set A has a series of elements. So 2, 4, 6, 8 and 10. So we are asked, is 2 an element of A? That means, is 2 in A? Yes, 2 is an element of A. So we say 2 is an element of A. Now if we see, is 3 an element of A? Well, 3 doesn't actually feature at all in A. So we say that it is not. We say 3 is not an element of A. So this symbol means that it is an element of, and this symbol means that it's not an element of. And an element is the number of objects within a set. Now we have union. And union means everything in A and everything in B. So each of these sets would be labelled A and B. And a union means both. The intersection then is what's common to both sets. So this part in the middle. N means intersection. This shaded area refers to everything in A, not B. Everything in A that has nothing to do with B. We can't include the intersection because that includes B. The same way if you said B not A, it would be everything in this part of B, but not A. Now you have this hashtag, which I told you before is not called a hashtag in maths, it's called a cardinal number. It means the number of elements in a set. So if we had set two, four, six, well, the number of elements or the cardinal number of that set is three because you've got one, two, three objects in the set. Now you've got A or B complement. That means complement of. So what you do is you cover A and you list everything else outside of A. That's what A complement is. B complement then means you cover B and you say list everything else outside of that. Here we have subset or not a subset. So let's take the set Q. It's got the numbers 1 to 6. Is 1, 2 a subset of Q? Yes, because 1 and 2 is part of Q. Is 2, 6 and 5 a subset of Q? Yes, because you have 2, 6 and 5. Is 3, 9 a subset of Q? No. It is not a subset of Q. 3 is part of Q, but 9 isn't. So we say it's not a subset. And is 7, 8 a subset of Q? It is not a subset of Q. So if it is a subset, you write it with this symbol. If it's not a subset, you just put a line through it. And finally, for set notation, you have the empty set or the null set. And that basically means that there's nothing in the set. You don't say zero because zero could be considered an element of a set. Okay, let's take a look at this problem involving sets. So we've got the Venn diagram with A and B. And we're told that in A, there's A, C, E and G. And in B, there's B, D, F and H. Well, straight away, we can see that there's actually no intersection here because nothing is common. So we put everything into A and everything into B. So for A, I will have A, C, I will have E, and G. And that's going to be set A. Set B then will consist of B, D, F and H. B, D, F and H. Now I need to cross off my universal set. Have I got A included? Yes. Have I got B included? Yes. Have I used C? Yes. Have I used D? Yes. Have I used E? Yes. Have I used F? Yes. Have I used G? Yes. Have I used H? Yes. But I is left over. That means I goes in the universal. 
it's not a part of A or B, so it goes on the outside. Now we answer the questions using the Venn diagram above. So it's asking us what is A union B? A union B is everything in A and in B. So we list all the elements. So here we have the set A union B. A intersection B then is what we just looked at a minute ago. It's the null set. So you either put this symbol or just an empty set because there's nothing in the middle. Everything in A that's not in B then would be A, C, E and G. Because it's everything that's in A that's not in B. Everything in B that's not in A then is B, D, F and H. A complement then, we cover A and we list all the other elements. So what we actually include is B, D, F, H and it's A complement so we include I as well. And then A union B complement, we would cover A union B so we're just left with I. Now let's take this problem here. We're told that there's a survey of 100 teenagers and it found that 60 of them watched X Factor, 50 watched EastEnders and 15 watched both. Represent this information in the diagram. Okay, let's say that this is the set that watched X Factor and E represents EastEnders. Okay, 15 people watched both. So 15 will go in our intersection because it's common to both. Now of that 15, of the 60 people that watched X Factor, 15 of them watched EastEnders. So we actually need to say 60 take away 15 will give me the amount that watched X Factor. So 45 watched X Factor. And by the same reason then, well, if 50 watched EastEnders, but 15 also of that 50 watched X Factor, we need to take 15 away from 50. So we say 50, take away 15 is 35. So 35 goes here. Now, in part two, we're asked how many teenagers watched neither EastEnders nor X Factor? Well, we need to see that when we add these three numbers, do we get 100? And when we add them together, we can see that we actually get 95. So that means that five teenagers didn't watch EastEnders or X Factor because we were told that 100 teenagers were surveyed. So five goes on the outside or the universal. 